Hey there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see behind me, it's tropical house plants. So today I'm going to be continuing on with the plant review series, and today we're going with not necessarily a rare plant and not necessarily a completely common plant. Today we're going to be talking about the Mandula pothos, or the Epipremnum Mandula, basically. And I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see, but there you can see the, the leaves that everybody is really after on this plant. Now I will put this down because to say that it is wobbly would be the understatement. It's not only on just a moss pole, it's also got three support sticks and a whole bunch of plant ties and wishes and prayers and that is what is keeping it up. As always, if you're coming back, welcome back. You know the drill by now, you will see the chapters down below, so if you want to skip to your favourite bit, please do. If you're new, welcome! And just a bit of kind of ground rules for these types of videos, they will be biased to my experience in my conditions, which is in the UK, growing in a conservatory and whatever that might mean, so there is no ways of me not making this unbiased. It's my review of a plant that I've grown in my care with my conditions. I do, however, encourage all of you, if you've got this plant and you want to share your experiences with it, please drop it in the comments down below. Essentially, what I would like for these review series to be is a repository of information if people want to go and see what a specific plant is like to own after months or even years, and they want to see how other people are getting on with it, certain challenges that might not be they might want to be aware of they can come to these videos and check them out. Now let's dive into the very first topic. So background with this Mandula pothos. And this is an interesting one because when I first bought this, it was tiny, it was only three or four leaves, it was a very, very small plant. And I bought it from a local plant store. I didn't spend an awful lot of money. It's before the kind of different varieties of pothos became kind of the in thing to for people to be looking at. And I still don't think that most pothos varieties are particularly expensive. I do know that there are some extreme examples and some certain epipremnums can be. I am thinking of one that has been on my wish list for a very long time, which is the Epipremnum Skeleton Key. Oh, I so want to get one of those, but I've not come across one at a relatively decent price, unfortunately, just yet. So I think I saw one, I came across one at a plant swap, but it had already been swapped with somebody else, and it was that like, no. But yeah, hopefully I, that will be one that will be coming into my care very, very soon. And actually, for the people that have been here for a while, is something like a wish list video something you would want me to do? Do let me know in the comments down below and I can give you my up-to-date wish list of plants. But yes, so this was a plant that I didn't buy as a Mandula pothos. Originally, when I had bought it, I had bought it as an Epipremnum Enjoy or even Happy Leaf. I think they were calling it both names. <laughs> I think at that point it's whatever they could classify it is as the best. And this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is an enjoy. I don't think it's a happy leaf. People that know the difference between those two, especially if they've got both varieties, do let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know, but I have always called this my enjoy. And this now is one of four plants that started from one mother plant because it just kept essentially getting way too large. I kept propagating it and moving it into pots. So this is one, I'll put this down and we can keep talking about the Mandula. So the Mandula pothos that I ended up getting was sold to me as a different name. It was obviously an enjoy or a happy leaf, neither of which it was. And I was happy with it at that point. I didn't know I mean, I kept seeing Mandula pothos were available online at that point. I could see and I could see the happy leaf and I could see the enjoy. I couldn't really see a huge difference in those plant leaves and structure and all these things. Now that I have got at least two of those, I can see that there is a difference. It's not huge, but there is a difference. And I was able to reclassify it myself after I've seen it grow for a bit. And I'm just like, this isn't an enjoy. This is definitely not a happy leaf either. This is kind of coming across more as a mandula, and the more I grew it and the more I got challenges with it, the more I realized that is 
probably what I had in my care at that point, rather than the Enjoy or the Happy Leaf. But all in all, I was still really happy. This was still a plant that I would have eventually added to my collection anyway, because with Pothos, it is very much like Pokemon. You gotta get them all. <laughs> At least I do. I don't know. I think maybe I'm just weird. But I think there are some other people that are that do like collecting kind of pothos varieties. There is something to be said about very, very easy care plants. This one out of all of the different types of pothos tends to be slightly more challenging, but we'll talk about that in one of the other sections. But yeah, I think that's kind of a, a good information in terms of the background and how this plant came into my care. Now moving on to speed of growth for this one, and this is a relatively interesting situation with this plant because it is a pothos, so you'd assume that it would grow relatively fast. You might also have an assumption that because it's variegated it might grow a bit slower than say a jade or an all green pothos or the golden pothos which has got the, the yellow variegation running through it you would kind of be correct and incorrect on both of those. It, out of all of the pothos varieties that I have got, it does grow the slowest. So just to benchmark that against, <laughs> usually I will benchmark it against the pothos or the golden pothos. So yes, if a golden pothos in my collection, I keep pointing down because you might not be able to see this, but that is where the golden pothos sits, in this room at least. And if that will bring out two, three, four leaves in the summer, this one might bring up one or two. It is a slower growing pothos. And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that it does have very large sectoral white sections on the leaves, unlike the golden pothos, basically. The flip side of that, and I will mention the enjoy that I have, that one also does have sectoral white sections on the leaves and quite large sections, not quite to the level of the mandula. That one to me does grow almost as fast as the golden pothos. The leaves are smaller, however, and I think that is generally how it will grow. I think, I don't think I've ever grown the enjoy on a plank or a wall or anything like that to see those leaves get larger. I have as you saw with this plant, it is, it had started life <laughs> on the smallest moss pole in the world, but uh, it has since moved on to support sticks. This is one that maybe if I'm feeling gracious towards it in the winter, I might give it an actual moss pole because I have seen recently seen some pictures surface of other people's mandula pothos on moss poles or even planks and the leaves do get yowch. And I think that would be quite cool. So hopefully I'll do that. But yeah, this plant is definitely slower and I think it is to do mainly at that level of sectoral variegation. Because if I'm benchmarking this against maybe something like the Marble Queen or, and I think, I'm never going to state this very confidently, I think one of the plants that I got as a Marble Queen might actually be a Snow Queen for the sheer level of white that is on the leaves. That plant still grows faster, and that generally, at least from what I can see on my plants, has a lot more white on it than the mandula. So I don't know what is causing it to be a bit slower based on what I am seeing from other people and other kind of chat that is happening online. I think a lot of other people would agree that this is a relatively slow pothos. I mean, it's still a pothos, so it won't be growing at the rate of a ZZ plant, but it's a slower growing pothos variety. Please, 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 if you do have this and you agree with that statement or disagree with that statement, let me know down below. I think me and everybody else would be quite curious to see what other people's experiences will be in terms of speed of growth for this plant. Ease of propagation for this plant, and this is one of the propagates, and you can see some of the crispy leaves, and that was probably one of the first leaves that I propagated it in to actual pond itself. This was relatively easy to propagate, the same way that you would do with most pothos. 
I've tried it in water propagation and it did okay eventually, but it did throw a bit of a wobble to begin with. But what I found has worked really well for me is just sticking it in some pond that is already in a water reservoir and eventually it does take a while to root out, probably more so than the average pothos. Interestingly, however, and again, this is only anecdotal because I've only ever done it once and it had good results versus not doing it this way and very long way of me saying, when I took a cutting and put this in water, the first time around it was relatively slow and it struggled for a bit. The second time around, same conditions, cutting in water, but I added in a cutting of the golden pothos that rooted out a lot faster. Because obviously me and a lot of other people will talk about the benefits of adding something like a pothos cutting in water because essentially what happens is that pothos cutting does release a bit of a growth hormone into the water because it's got an imbalance of a certain type of hormone and I cannot remember if I can find the name of it I will add it at the top there but generally it will mean that your water propagations will root out a bit faster not always but a lot of the times it will do this is interesting because I thought it's a pothos so it should have that itself it shouldn't need that additional injection of the hormone but it really did help as I said I've only ever done this once so I don't know if <laughs> oh, I'm such a geek when it comes to math I don't know if it's statistically significant because I've not done enough testing on this but it did have a good result for me. The one thing I will say when it comes to propagations with this one is the lower the leaves, they were the slightly larger leaves when I first put it on. So you can see the leaves were relatively sizable to begin with. Some of them did crisp up when they were starting to root up, but a lot of the leaves when they first came out were quite small and they're eventually starting to get bigger again. And you might be able to see, and I'll bring it in a bit closer, and if not, I will insert a video clip here, but you might be able to see quite how pale those stems are. So generally you will see with, when you're looking at variegated plants, you'll see stripes of white. These stems are almost entirely white with some flecks of green, which are then coming out on the leaves. So this is kind of harkening back to that slight slowness of growth because of the level of variegation. Availability for this plant is an interesting one because as I said, when I first got it, I didn't actually buy it as a Manjula pothos. So price-wise, I mean, it's, it was still a pothos. It was before they became as big as they are now, the different varieties that pothos can come in, especially things like the Manjula, the Snow Queen, some of these ones that are slightly more desirable. Generally, I got this plant for mid to high single digits. Granted, it was very small, but I got it very, very cheaply, basically. And it's purely because I said it hadn't trended yet. They didn't really know what they were selling. And generally, even the enjoys have come up in price since I first bought it at the level that I bought it. But I would assume based on what I'm seeing online, these are still probably going to be low to mid at, at worst double digits, basically, at least here in the UK. I know certain places of the world might, these might be less available, but again, I mean, it's still a pothos, so a huge price tag doesn't make full sense to me, especially if you're getting a single leaf cutting and all these things. These shouldn't be expensive plants. These should be relatively kind of easy reach for most people. And these are good plants to kind of transition when you're, when you're kind of moving out of your kind of common house plants and it's just before you start getting into the quote unquote rare plants and spending a lot of money there. This is a good in between bit because pothos generally are quite hardy. This one less so. I will come to that in a minute. But yeah, it's it's a plant that you should be able to find. I, sometimes I've seen this in plant stores, very rarely as Manjula basically back then. I don't think I've ever seen it recently in stores. You can find it in some online resellers, definitely on eBay and things like that. So this is one that you should, if you do the smallest amount of research, it doesn't have to be a huge amount, you should be able to come across 
Manjula plants, either to buy the full plant or buy cuttings. These are also really good ones that you occasionally get at uh, plant swaps. So ask around for your friends as well. Like if somebody's got some of this, they might give you a cutting, basically. So yeah, availability-wise, relatively easy to find. Not fully common, you won't get it absolutely everywhere, but with a tiny bit of research, you should be able to get one. Pests with this one. And this one, I will say, I have had mealybugs on it. I have had spider mites on it. Both of those things. I don't think even based on some of my plants getting white fly recently in the conservatory, I don't think this is one that the white flies are attracted to. I think generally my pothos plants tend to be left alone by the white fly. And again, I should tell you how hardy this plant is. But also something to bear in mind with this, because I had the most amazing comment that was left on uh, a reel that I did recently closely related to those uh, weird plants that I did a series on. So I've got the first video that I will link here. And I also then did a second video, which is the one I'm referring to now. And I'll also link that there, where I was talking about the Sephora prostrata, which has had tiny, tiny leaves and is called Little Baby. I said that it's from New Zealand. And I had somebody reach out to me from New Zealand and just gone, Those, that plant looked really, really familiar to me. I didn't know why. And I'm just like, then I realized it it's basically a weed. It grows like bushes in, in New Zealand. It's got yellow flowers, all these things. And, it, and, it, and they were saying, I can't believe this is being sold as a houseplant. The comment I'm going to make here is most houseplants in the region of the world where they grow natively might be considered weeds because they tend to be tenacious in their environment. The pothos, the standard pothos where it grows or, and there's a lot of countries now that don't allow pothos. And it's a plant that if it's the right conditions and you literally throw a cutting in the garden, it could bring down a tree. Monstera, the stories of Monstera, again, somebody that I knew from South Africa was saying their grandmother's house, they had a Monstera, they're trying to chop it back. The house was practically being lifted out of its foundations because of the Monstera roots. And I'll bring it something in a bit closer to home. Yes, some people in the UK might try to grow the English ivy or the Hedera helix indoors. But the majority of us here, and yes, it's technically a plant that you can buy from a store, but it's almost considered a weed. I cannot tell you the previous owner of this house had ivy everywhere in the garden. I am still battling it a year and a half later. <laughs> so just bear that in mind that these plants might be weeds in certain parts of the world as well. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, so this one, spider mites, mealybugs, other pests, I went really off topic there. I do apologize. Um, people that know me know that I go off on tangents a lot. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so it's spider mites and mealybugs. Really the only thing that I've had on this plant, not to the point where it would kill off the plant very, very quickly. And as long as I treat it in good time, it tends to be fine. So accessories with this plant, and I'll bring it up so you can see the <laughs> smallest moss pole in the world. And for the OG crew, janky support sticks for the win on this one. I've got it also in a cash po, and I've got it in pond. Now, the thing I will say, and I'll put it back down again, the thing I will say about this plant, and this is a bit that I was talking about earlier on that I, I kind of hinted at earlier, is I have found its propensity more so than any other pothos that I own towards going towards root rot very, very, very easily. So I had it in soil for a long period of time. I had to wait every time as it until it was bone dry before I watered it if I let it stay dry for too long and then I watered it, it can still get root rot. It was painful, but I thought, you know what, I might knock it back by a few months because it grows as slowly as it can at an occasion, but I will slowly transition it into pond. And I did the transition into pond without the water reservoir. I'm finally in a good place that I have got this inner water reservoir now without it rotting out, which I am 
super happy about. So that's the other thing that I would say. If you can slowly, when you're first getting this plant, transition it into something like pond, you will thank me later, basically, because you don't have quite as much of the guesswork. You might not get it to rot out as much. I'm not going to lie and say that it's easy. There's still going to be a risk that you might start getting some rot in it. But if you do it the way that I just mentioned, it's probably going to be a bit better. So move it into pond. Do not give it a water reservoir for at least three to six months until you've seen that it's fully rooted in. Otherwise, see if you can do a propagate that's in water and then move it into pond. You should be fine and then go straight into reservoir. But doing it with a transitional period of three to six months before the water reservoir goes in will do you a world of good, basically, because it will still give it those ideal conditions that it needs, and it will still give it enough of that moisture, but without it going towards rot too much. Definitely a plant that if you're going to have it in pond, remember to flush it every so often so you don't get bacteria building up around the roots, which could again lead to root rot, especially if you've got it in a water reservoir eventually. But yeah, I mean, essentially, if you can give it a moss pole or if you can give it a plank or even a wall to climb up, obviously be careful with a wall. It's still a pothos, so it can still do some structural damage to the wall. You will start seeing some beautiful, beautiful leaves. But really, you can let it trail and it will have smaller leaves. If you want it to get the big leaves, just give it something to climb up on, basically. I mean, even with the sticks with my one, with the support sticks, it was still bringing out slightly larger leaves. It's not huge. I think with that one, I would need to give it a moss pole or a plank, but it's still relatively sizable leaves, which is great, but it's still a pothos. So as long as you fertilize it on occasion, you watch out for the watering, use the right type of media and give it something to go up, you should be good. Two final thoughts for this one, and I'll start it off as I usually do. Knowing what I know now about this plant, would I buy it if I didn't have it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Even with all the challenges that I've had with this specific plant, I would probably still get it. It's still one that I really enjoy looking at. Yes, it can be a bit of a challenge, but What's life with, without a bit of a challenge, basically? <laughs> it's challenging. I find it's challenging enough without it being frustrating for me. I have also heard stories with a lot of people that have tried this plant for a long period of time and they eventually gave up because the struggle for them was too much. Completely fine. Completely respect that basically. It's finding where your limits are. <laughs> I have got much fussier plants than this one. It's fine. I keep pointing down because I've got it sitting down at the moment because, and you can see when I was holding it up, it kind of tends to lean because I pretty much have got it leaning against a window I'm also giving this bright, bright indirect light, basically. So give it as much light as you can. It will bleach out the leaves on occasion, but I found that one works best. This one is definitely not one for low light situations. And then giving it a score from zero or one being the worst, 10 being the best, this is probably going to be a six or a seven, actually. So it is a very, very cool plant. I still enjoy it. I'm taking points off obviously because of the speed and obviously because it can go towards root rot. But I'm also giving it a lot more points because even though it's not a common house plant, common, common, you can get everywhere, it's still one that you should be relatively easy to get and it's not a huge amount of money. And if you're very, very lucky and you've got some friends that have got one, they might give you a cutting or you might score one at a plant swap. But yeah, very, very cool, different looking pothos basically. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. If you've got your own plant, as I've said, and you want to share your experiences, please do so down below. And yeah, hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.